Hi there, my name is John Compton and today on Heads Up for Hosers, we're gonna be talking about the ORB fitting, also known as O-ring balls. Very happy, is that better? When plumbing with angled pipe threads, you encounter a problem when trying to orientate hoses or tubes from a port connection. Therefore, the introduction of the ORB or O-ring boss solved this problem. Because ORB can be adjusted to seal with the turn of a jam nut, this eliminated any problems with the orientations of fittings after this point. ORB represents the third type of sealing action discussed so far on Heads Up for Hosers. For review, MPT seals by the threads crushing together. Our JIC fitting seals on a metal-to-metal -metal seat connection. And your ORB seals on an actual O-ring. ORB has a straight thread, so no sealing can be done on the actual threads. Instead, an O-ring provides a surface to seal on. This makes it more forgiving than a metal-to-metal -metal seal and exponentially more reusable than sealing with crushing on threads like a pipe thread. ORB is a very common connection used in hydraulic component parts. It is found on ports of most hydraulic motors, pumps, and cylinders due to the fact that it provides a strong, reusable seal and can be orientated easily. The ORB connection is supported by multiple fluid power associations as the recommended threaded port connection because of its leakage control. When inserted into the port, the threads are used to hold the connection together. In the port, the threads do not reach to the top. Instead, there's a chamfer or bevel at the top of the port. This is where the O-ring will do the sealing. The ORB fitting is excellent in vibration and or temperature cycling environments. This is because an O-ring is excellent at absorbing impact and temperature fluctuations. To avoid leaking, an O-ring must be chosen that is compatible with the fluid in the system. If you miss this step, your O-ring could deteriorate and the system could fail. The most common O-ring is Buna N. This elastomer is a great general purpose sealing option. Buna N is resistant to many oils and lubricants and has a wide temperature range. There are too many O-ring and hydraulic fluid combinations to go through fully. For specific applications, please consult the back of your Greg's catalog for an extensive list of fluid and elastomer compatibility. Because the sealing of an ORB does not occur on the threads, but instead occurs on the O-ring, they are highly reusable. Here at Greg Distributors, we recommend you replace the O-ring every time the fitting is reused. We offer a wide range of sizes and materials to fit your needs. O-rings are measured by something called durometer. Durometer is a measure of hardness of a material. The higher the number, the harder the material and vice versa. By hardness, we mean the material's resistance to indentation. For example, chewing gum has a durometer of 25. An automotive tire is 70. And a skateboard wheel is 98. So, in relation to fittings, it's important to have an O-ring with the proper durometer depending on the pressure you're dealing with. ORB fittings will always use a 90 durometer O-ring. ORB connections come in a variety of orientations and sizes. Here at Greg Distributors, we carry from dash two to dash 32. Now you may be asking yourself what a dash size is. Well, a dash size is the determination of sizes for hose, tubes, and fitting measurements. This is measured in 1 16th inch segments. In this video series, we will deal with mostly hose and fittings, but note that for tubing, the dash size calculation is slightly different. Here's a hose example. When dealing with most types of hose, dash 32 equals 32 1 16th inch segments, which equals 32 sixteenths, or equal to two inch hose ID. Now, to identify male ORB fittings. You'll know you're dealing with an ORB fitting versus other fittings by a few simple identifiers. First, ORB fittings are a straight thread. Second, 
they will have an O-ring located at the bottom of the thread. If no O-ring is present, it does not mean that the fitting is not an ORB, but that the O-ring may be missing and need to be reinstalled. With the O-ring missing, this fitting can begin to resemble a BSPP fitting, but what makes an ORB fitting stand out is that the sealing is all done on the O-ring. This means that without any seat, anywhere on the male fitting, you know you're dealing with a male ORB fitting, even if the O-ring is missing. You may see ORB fittings in different styles. One with a jam nut and a washer as seen here, and one with no jam nut or washer. On angled fittings, there will always be a jam nut and a washer. On a straight connection, you will most likely see it without. So, if you need to measure the size of this fitting, here's where we start. Take your male fitting and measure the outside diameter. Here we get 1 and 5 16 OD. Opening your identification booklet to the ORB page, to confirm that this is a dash 16 fitting, we next look at thread size where it says 1 and 5 16 hyphen 12. The number beside the OD measurement, in this case 12, is the thread pitch. To confirm this, we take out our thread pitch gauge and find 12 and we lay it on the threads like so. See here that we have a nice fit that confirms that this is 12 threads per inch and 1 and 5 16 OD confirming that this is dash 16 ORB male fitting. Moving on to female ORB fittings. These can be identified in two ways. First, that it has a straight thread. And second, that there's a symmetrical sloping surface at the edge of the fitting, also known as the chamfer. This chamfer is the key identifying factor of a female ORB fitting, as it looks like a collar at the end of the threads, but it's actually a curved seat on which the O-ring will seal. This is done by compressing the O-ring of the male fitting into the chamfer. To confirm that we have a female ORB fitting, we'll first measure the inside diameter at any thread inside the fitting. Here we get one and one quarter inch. Looking at our identification booklet at inside diameter for one and one quarter, we see that we have a dash 16 and a thread size of one and five sixteenths dash 12. To confirm this, we take our thread pitch gauge and find 12. We lay it on the threads like so. We have a nice fit, which confirms that this is 12 threads per inch and a one and one quarter inch ID confirming that this is a dash 16 or B female fitting. When installing, you wanna follow a few basic steps. First thing you wanna do is check the O-ring for any damage, like nicks, scratches, or tears. If the O-ring is damaged, replace the O-ring with a new one. If the O-ring appears to be fine, lubricate the O-ring with the same hydraulic fluid that will be in the system before installation. With an ORB fitting, there's no industry standard torque or tightening specifications. You just need to tighten the fitting until bottomed out. First, we'll demonstrate installation of an ORB fitting with a jam nut and a washer. Here we have a 45 degree elbow, and we'll use this port from this hydraulic cylinder to demonstrate installation. First, make sure the jam nut is back all the way off. Then make sure the washer is not loose and pushed up as far as possible. Now we tighten down the fitting until it's bottomed out. Then we'll back it off till we have the desired orientation, but not more than one full turn. Once the fitting is facing the way we want it, we'll tighten down our jam nut until we have a complete seal of the O-ring. Inspect the O-ring to make sure it's not pinched and they have a proper seal by having the washer seated flat on the face of the port. On the other port, we'll use an ORB fitting with no jam nut. Simply tighten down until you're bottomed out. Remember to lubricate your O-ring first, then tighten down the fitting until it's sealed.
There are a few things that can go wrong if the ORB fitting is not installed properly. This visual shows that the O-ring is seated properly in the machine groove above the thread. But if you do not properly lubricate the O-ring prior to installation, this is what can happen. The connection will fail in a short period of time because the system pressure will cause the O-ring to blow. Next, we can see what happens when we have improper reuse by not backing off the jam nut. If you are reusing or reconnecting the fitting, you want to back off the jam nut first. Lastly, you want to make sure that the washer on the fitting is not loose or floppy. The washer should be tight against the adapter body. If it is not, replace the entire fitting with a new one. A handy little trick for all you hosers out there. If you're ever in a pinch, JIC fittings can be used in place of an ORB if the shoulder on the JIC is large enough to accommodate an O-ring. Because ORB and JIC have the exact same measurements and thread pitch on all sizes. JIC caps can also be used on ORB fittings. You've now learned a little more about the O-ring boss fitting and its practical applications. If you have any questions about this type of fitting, come into your local Greg's branch or call into the order desk. From all of us Canadian hosers here at Greg Distributors, thanks for watching.